Hiya, um, today I'm going to go through a few suggestions to stop your foundation from sitting in any pores and thank you Susan for the suggestion of this one. Um, as you can see I'm quite red today, I've taken my makeup on and off a few times so this would double up as how to cover that up as well. Um, in terms of pores, I think it's one of those things that people are very aware of in themselves and I just think it's worth remembering that we've all got pores. It's literally a part of us like arms are or legs or anything and so you can definitely reduce the appearance of them in your makeup but just don't beat yourself up that they're not going to be there because they're always going to be there and we've all got them. And I think a few key things that you can do to minimise the appearance of them should be something you feel really proud of rather than going for this dream that we're sold of like, this product will remove your pores and like, that's just never going to happen. So I always think sometimes it's important to remember that, you know, marketing spiel can sometimes go in and we can believe it and it's not true. So to start, I'd really recommend that you always start your makeup as hydrated as you can be. I'm going in with the Kiehl's Hydra Plump Serum. Um, I've mentioned this a good few times, but it's essentially a really hydrating serum with quite a thin consistency, perfect for under makeup. Um, and in terms of your prep, if you're finding that your foundation is sitting in any pores, whenever you're looking for products, I'd recommend that you look for things that use the word blurring, blurring technology, blurring this, blurring that. I've got an example actually of a serum from Murad, which is great, the Invisibler. This is the kind of thing that just gives a kind of velvety coating all over the skin and provides a nice even base for everything to go over. But the one I'm going to use today is another Murad one, actually. It's the Oil and Pore Control Mattifier. Now, when I'm doing videos on here, I've got my skin concerns, which is rosacea. It's a bit dry. It's this, that, the other. So I tend to use things that suit me. But if I'm ever speaking to someone oily or someone that really struggles with kind of pores and texture and things like that, this would never not be in my kit. This is a primer that essentially blurs over the appearance of any of that texture. Um, it's really great for helping to control oil and to make sure that through the day, you're not feeling oily. Um, and it really made me laugh, actually. The other day, I did a little TikTok about three different primers I recommend. I said this one. I said um, the Becca First Light Priming Filter, if you want a bit of a luminosity and I said the pixie flawless beauty primer anyway did this video someone wrote in the comments that they went on to look fantastic to read up about this Murad one and they saw in the comments that someone had put Rose told me to get this but I feel like I've probably never done a video about it on here because I'm not particularly oily now this looks and feels completely matte and a friend of mine actually that's a nurse and he doesn't wear makeup or anything, but he has oily skin. He's been wearing that under a mask, long days, works wonders. This kind of prep, just all over those problem areas or those areas where you're noticing the oil and the pores, I cannot tell you the difference it makes to just have that extra layer of security to blur over any of that texture and create a base for your foundation to go on. So now I'm going to go in with my foundation as usual. And if you're especially noticing that your foundation is gathering, I would always recommend that you use a brush until you've got that under control. The reason being, um, you know me, as a general rule under normal circumstances, I always say whichever technique works best for you, go for that. I'm not one for insisting that you use one method or another. But when you're worried about this kind of sitting in the wrong places, a brush is great to just smooth that product out, buff it nice and evenly and create a nice even layer of it everywhere. And it just means that your foundation can glide over that layer rather than getting mixed up within it. Now, I think you can see already that is gliding on so well. And isn't it funny, to be honest with you, I've done a few videos today and so my skin is a bit more red and I didn't really want to do a video because I was like, oh, I look so red, I don't really feel nice. But actually it just goes to show 
if you were having one of those days like I'm having today, a few little prep steps and you, you feel fine. Like I'm not worried about it at all now. And the thing that pushed me to do it actually was I thought, do you know what? We're all in lockdown at the moment. We're probably looking at our phones a bit more often. All you're seeing on Instagram is like bombarded with everyone looking fab. And it's quite nice to think that if you have had a day like my skin was today, that you just see someone that looks like you and you're not constantly looking at all this perfect stuff. No. Back to foundation sitting in pause because there I am going off yet again. I've buffed this all over, I've taken my time, I've prepped with hydration, I've prepped with my primer, I've got my foundation on, I'm going to set it with some powder. One of the really key things I would say setting with powder does is it prevents all of this from moving around and as such that then means that it's not going to be as likely to gather in areas of pores or gather in areas of fine lines. Um, what was I going to say? I had a really good point. Another thing, by the way, this powder is actually called Bye Bye Pores. Um, it's the It Cosmetics one that I always tend to use. Again, it really pays when you're finding these kind of solutions for you. Everyone's got their own favourite brands. Everyone's got their own budget. Everyone's got their own nearest shop to them. Look for those keywords like blurring, like, um, I'm trying to think what else they'd use, mattifying, these things can make a huge difference in finding the right products. Now, that's sealed into place. If you wanted to use a setting powder on top of that, you absolutely could. And what I would say, if you were choosing to layer anything on top of this, you want to build on top of it rather than um, scrub this off. So, for example, I'm just, I've got a few things to hand from another video I've just done. If I was to go in with this bronzing stick, I might as well while I've got everything in front of me. As opposed to swiping this on my skin, which might lift everything I've just worked so hard to build, I'm going to take it on the brush and pat it onto the skin. And that way I'm not disturbing all of this hard work I've just done. Um, a key, key thing for pores is if you can, use an exfoliant and try and keep on top of your exfoliation because the exfoliation and the hydration together will help to really reduce the appearance of those pores. Um, a friend of mine is always saying to me, that's it, I can really see my fine lines. I think it might be time for Botox. Have a look, she'll FaceTime me. Have a look, have a look. And I'll be like, be honest, did you moisturise and cleanse properly every single night this week? And she'll say no. And like, listen, if you're getting Botox or anything good for you, go for it. Absolutely. But I always say, like, make sure that you've tried every other step before you reach that point. Because the chances are when you've exfoliated and used your cleanser and your moisturiser a few days on the trot, you're going to feel completely different. And it's always the case with her. She's always like, I jumped to this extreme measure, but actually the small, simple steps makes the big difference. And I really think that's true of managing foundation in pores. Um, one thing I will say, I, for example, have the rosacea. I'm not always able to exfoliate. I definitely couldn't exfoliate the way my skin is at the moment because it's quite flared up and irritated. So if you have rosacea, you know you're looking at a separate set of rules um, that is much gentler. But if you don't have rosacea and you're watching this and you have this problem, slotting in something like the Pixi Glow Tonic, the Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads is going to make a huge difference to your routine. Um, but there's a few tips. I hope you enjoyed. Susan, that one was for you. And just to let you know, like these videos that I'm making, I'm very much just being led by the comments and what you want to see. So if there's something I haven't covered already, please leave me a comment. And another thing actually just worth pointing out, and I'll always keep doing them fresh. I love doing them. But there's a section, if you're watching this on Instagram, it's in the IGTV section. You can click to a different series. If you're watching it on YouTube, you can click to a different playlist. But there's a section I've got called At Home Beauty School. And that's basically a series of videos that you can just take the tips and use whatever you've already got at home. So um, do have a look at that because it might be that whatever your question is, I might have covered, but it's been ages ago and you haven't seen it. 
Um, but anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching.